This is the Fireforge Ashigaru sprue set and similar to the Samurai Warriors, these Ashigaru Warriors, so they're not the Missile Troops version, these are the Warriors, uh, enables you to build six figures with a variety of different weapons. Now you can see the weapon sprue on the left hand side here. It is fairly straightforward. Um, you get a choice of two sets of pole arm essentially. You've got the long Yari spear in the middle there you can see. There's enough for all six of them. Uh, and then there's also an option for Naginata as well and you can give all six of them one of those or you can mix and match. Um, and there's not a huge deal more to be said about those weapons. Then on the right hand side here you've got, as before, six torsos, so that limits how many actual figures you can make, but a greater choice of legs to go with those. So you can see on this one actually there's not just seven sets, there are a grand total of nine sets of legs, which you can see there. This does mean, I suppose, that if you had the Ashigaru shooters, the missile troops, you'd have a greater diversity of poses for how they might be using their um, muskets or their bows, for example. Uh, and then the other difference to the samurai sprue is that the heads come in multiple parts. So you can see the Ashigaru uh, headgear here, and then you can see that the faces and the heads uh, are put separately on the sprue underneath, and then you fit which ones you want into the um, hats, so that gives you an extra little bit of construction work that you need to do, but allows you to have a little bit of a customization option, I suppose, as to what fits into which one, um, more than perhaps if they just gave you a rigid set of hats. Mm, until I put them together, I suppose I won't know necessarily how I feel about that, and there are some bareheaded options as well. Uh, and then you've got the Sashimono as well, so you can give as many as you like of those, plus the option to give them they're an individual additional, uh, what in European terms would be an arming sword, I suppose, but is them having their own additional sidearm, their own additional sword, along with their primary polearm weapon. And that's it, really. Straightforward, simple look at the Ashigaru sprue. Um, I'll take one quick post along the legs, there you can see them. Some different kneeling and sort of half kneel squatting combinations for them, which will probably be more evident when they're put together. And there you go, we'll come back shortly uh, when I've put a few of them together. So these are the completed Ashigaru figures. Uh, as you see, I've done all six of them, and I've given four of them the uh, Yari, the Spears, and two of them Naginata, and a couple of them the Sashimono back banners as well. Um, what you see is kind of what you get. Again, they were quite straightforward to put together. Maybe a little bit of trying to make sure that the um, wrist on the left arm's married up with the hands, which are moulded onto the weapons, um, was probably the trickiest part. Other than that, they consist of the legs, the torso, the weapon arms, the head in two parts on these, uh, and then the optional additional sword uh, and sashimono on the back as well. Um, quite nice figures. Um, they somehow look a bit sort of bulkier than the samurai figures, but it's not the case if I were to put them next to each other. And in fact, I can. Here we go. You'd see that they scale very nice, that they are the same. It's just the bulk of some of the slightly different uh, gear and apparel. So there we go. Samurai for contrast. Um, what I will say is that uh, the Naginata are quite nice um, because of the portion scale of them. The spears that they come with, now I know that, that Yari may have been different lengths. Um, these are, you know, long spears verging onto being towards sort of short pikes really. And in plastic these could be quite vulnerable I think to um, breakages. In terms of replacing them, you'd have to drill through both moulded hands to replace them with a steel rod, which might be quite fiddly. Uh, uh, so whilst these spears may have existed in this length in this period, for example, I think they might have been better served making these a little bit shorter. So perhaps, you know, this length. So they didn't look really short, they're not necessarily Naginata length, like on these figures. Um, but whilst looking like relatively long spears were a bit more practical because of how far they stick out, particularly in the poses like this one where they're levelled, if you were to make this a skirmish game, you know, they're going to be running up against other figures looking like this. You know, it slightly jars the, 
I know, immersiveness or aesthetic of it's probably unfair and a, a bit too complicated, but you can see what I mean. Proportionally speaking, they might be both practically, um, you know, difficult to look after because of the length and vulnerability of these plastic spears. Uh, and they're a bit, for my taste, on the long side anyway, for what I want to visually represent. I think they could have come out about, you know, this long. Maybe knocked about an inch, inch and a half off the length of the haft of the spear. But that is basically my biggest criticism. It's actually not the end of the world at all. I suppose it probably looks a bit weirder when there's only a few of them like this, as opposed to perhaps there being a block of them, um, if you were going to use them en masse, as opposed to for maybe a skirmish game. Um, but very nice figures, as I said before. I'll show you some close-ups of what some of them look like. So there we go. The guy with his Yari Red Eed, you can see he's got a Sashimono. Um, there's a s relatively small collection of different facial expressions. There's three with facial hair and three without, I think, are those that are used. Um, and the arms are labelled for which pairs match together on the sprues. Um, and they're relatively nice. As you can see, I've put one kneeling because it's kind of nice to use the different poses as well. So there you go, quite nice figures. Again, cleaning up the flash was probably the most time-consuming issue. It runs along uh, the front and sides of the legs, up and down the sides of the arms and so on. And so trimming that off uh, without damaging any of the details is probably the most time-consuming aspect um, of the build with these. And then there's also a figure with an Aginata as well. But you can see they go together very nicely. Um, I do like them, uh, despite my complaints about the spears. Uh, putting that to one side, uh, aesthetically for my vision of the period and, and what I might want to see from a samurai era figures, I really like them. Uh, I think they're very nice quality and they complement the uh, samurai quite nicely. Um, so there we go, that is the Ashigaru set uh, all put together, or at least those six. I haven't done Ashigaru shooters because I haven't got any of those, um, but in the next video um, we'll be having a look at the samurai shooters that I've put together and then the Samurai Cavalry, and also what I discovered in terms of being able to use spare parts from the kits to make a few more extra ordinary Samurai, because the Cavalry kit has a few spare torsos. But we'll look at that in the next video.